Welcome to worship for the first Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. God of the wilderness, your son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these 40 days to grow in wisdom and prayer so that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are but did not sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your Spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. 
I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirits descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. And now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May only truth be spoken here, and may only truth be received here. Amen. We begin the journey to Easter with the sign of ashes, an ancient sign speaking of the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marking the penitence of the community as a whole. We remember it on Ash Wednesday service. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We are all knit together as living stardust. Lent is a season. It's a time for us to reflect on our identity 
as children of God and our role and purpose as the church. It's a new beginning. We are wet stardust dancing in the wind of the Holy Spirit. It's a new beginning for us as church, an opportunity to get our priorities straight. So let's go back and walk together to the beginning of the creation story. The creator breathes the breath of life into the dust of the lifeless clay. Adam takes his first breath of sweet, rich air. And if you've ever been there at the beginning, when a child takes their first breath, you know that there are never words enough to describe the beauty of that first inhalation and the relief and joy of the parents at that first cry. Every breath is a precious gift. So imagine our first ancestors opening their eyes in self-consciousness, awe and wonder. Our deeply ancient ancestors coming into self-awareness. In the beginning, there was communion between humanity, creator, and creation. In the Genesis narrative of the Garden of Eden, all the animals come to Adam to be given their names. Using the imagination of our heart, we can see Adam walking about his kingdom, greeting every creature, touching it, and naming them. Humanity has a role in creation, adding that last final touch, as it were. So all of creation was in communion with God. But the later Genesis narratives show our propensity to be selfish, to be violent, to rebel against God and to pollute and corrupt creation. The story of the flood is an ancient interpretation of God's response to the violence of humanity. The family of Noah represents righteous humanity, and God does save the righteous. After the great flood, God makes a covenant with Noah, his descendants, and every living creature on earth. Never again will God send a flood to remove, to remove humanity from the face of the earth. And the rainbow is a sign of that covenant. It's a beautiful story which points to the love of God and the saving nature of God to care for God's people and indeed all of creation. For Noah, God's covenant faithfulness is for all creation. And for us, our baptism becomes an outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual gift or grace that we have been brought back into right relationship with God, bringing us right back to that Eden relationship. St. Peter draws on the image of the flood and God's saving action for the righteous to urge his readers to do what is right, even if it means suffering for it. Just as God saved Noah and his descendants through the ark, so God will save all people through the death and resurrection of Christ. Thanks to the choice of Jesus by faith, all who choose to do so can be restored to wholeness and communion with the Creator. The Church, the people of God, is now the new ark, a community meant to be a safe refuge for the lonely, the lost, those who are hurting from grief, those who are in need of healing and wholeness. When we look at the gospel for today, there are really three sections to it. We have Jesus' baptism, his testing in the wilderness, and Jesus' preaching. Mark really synthesizes and compresses the story of Jesus' ministry. So with Jesus' baptism, Jesus identifies with sinful humanity when he joins the crowds and is baptized. As the people are returning to God, confessing their sins, and baptism becomes something more than a ritual cleansing. Jesus' name is Emmanuel, God with us. He identifies with us. And Jesus is anointed as the Messiah, as Christ, by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus identifies with us. St. Mark tells us that uh, the Holy Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he was there for some 40 days, which represents a long time. The word uh, temptation could also be translated as tested. It could be a helpful translation, but Jesus was tested by the adversary, literally the enemy of our human nature, the Satan, the adversary. Mark does not go into all the details about the kinds of temptations Jesus faced. You can read about those in Matthew and Luke. 
but we are told that Jesus was not alone. There's this enigmatic phrase, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. It's fascinating. I hear echoes of the Genesis story now. And according to some scholars, there are two possible interpretations of this phrase, and he was there with the wild beasts. You know, two interpretations are, one is that the wild beasts represent threat and danger, and the other, and that Jesus overcame this, and the other interpretation recalls the prophecy of the peaceable kingdom in Isaiah chapter 11, where this Eden-like situation is restored. Isaiah says this, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion, and the and the foundling together, and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Now, that's often read in the season before Christmas, pointing to the coming of the Messiah, but here we have a sense of restoration, a restoration of creation, and Jesus is there with the wild beasts and the angels who ministered to him. And that word ministered is sometimes translated as served. Remember that Jesus said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man, he's referring to himself, did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Service is at the core of discipleship. Now, we need to reimagine our relationship with nature and understand our relationship with the land. The earth is precious and sacred. Only when we live this out in our lives will we as a species learn wisdom. With Jesus preaching, John is in prison, and this precipitates Jesus' public ministry because his time has come. It's the opportune time. The time has come for God to set things right. Jesus will stand up to the powers of empire. He will stand up for what is right. The time has come for the new Adam, our brother, to renew all of creation and overcome the old order of sin, separation from God, and death. That is the end of all relationships. The long-awaited Messiah has come, and with the Messiah comes God's kingdom. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is among you. It's within you. How I wish I knew that when, when I began my journey as a disciple, that everything I was searching for was already here, and all that I needed to do was to kneel or sit down in silence, close my eyes, breathe, meditate, and experience the presence of God within. That's available for you too. The kingdom of God is among you. And Jesus proclaims an era of restoration and that it's imminent. He will be here. But Jesus will not do it alone. Jesus calls the people, that's us, to start a new life in God's way and as disciples to become his body, bread for a hungry world. The season of Lent is a time to attune ourselves, our whole being, to this new and different reality. You know, when your first child is born, everything is changed for you. When the kingdom of heaven is born within you and you're just aware of it, you're forever changed. It's a new reality you find yourself in. And often in Lent, we consider ways of fasting or giving things up. This is important because the spiritual journey is all about transformation. If you want to have a closer relationship with God, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And there are ways and means and practical Christian wisdom Centuries and millennia old methods of coming close to God, like meditation, learning how to breathe, learning how to sit in silence in the presence of God, various forms of prayer, and being able to focus on the Holy Scriptures. This season of Lent, think about adding some Christian practices to your Lenten practices, because the simple practices that we do over time become simple habits, and then they become part of who we are, and they all help us to get closer to God. It's all about being immersed in love. But Lent is not just an individual activity, it's a communal activity. Just as we take care of ourselves and practice self-care, let's consider building from that self to community care. 
Build into your day simple practices which bring you closer to God and others. And over time, these simple practices help us to build the community. God gives us strength to live out simple acts of love as we care for others together. Our faith community has a great strength, and that is the communal ability to focus on the little things that bring us together and to build on those small acts of kindness, these simple acts of love, to do great things. For instance, the Paris kitchen renovation and permitting process is finally complete. We had a wonderful pancake meal and time of fellowship. Special thanks to our parish catering team, the delicious dishes, and for all the pantry and freezer items that were made available as a fundraiser. We give thanks to God for all those who helped make possible the parish hall kitchen renovation. I wish to thank Parish Corporation, especially the church wardens Ted and Sarah, along with the building committee and the members of the parish council for their unflagging support during this very lengthy process. So I'm going to end it here, but just be transformed by the renewal of your mind and your heart and trust the God who loves you and calls you a precious child. And that's what repentance and belief are. It's changing one's mind, opening one's heart, and living in the presence of the communion of giving love, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, just as Noah and his family were saved and brought into covenant relationship with you, help us to build up the ark of your church Help us to do the right things, even if it means suffering for it. And help us to build your peaceable kingdom so that all your children may find salvation to be brought back into right relationship and communion with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. In these intercessory prayers this morning, please respond to the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, with hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was tried and tempted by the devil. May we never be ashamed of temptation, but saved from the weakness of giving in. Help us choose the way of faithfulness rather than popularity, service rather than fame, and sacrifice rather than power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the whole family of your church here in Canada. May all your people be built up in faith and demonstrate in their lives the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us to play our part in the life of the church throughout the world through our prayers and by our gifts of money and service during this season of Lent and beyond. Give courage to those who find it hard to follow you. Give us a fresh vision that leads to action and strengthen us to serve you in the places where we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for those in positions of authority and leadership that they do not misuse their powers, but respect and care for all their peoples and for the natural resources of their countries. During our Lenten observances, may we be constantly aware of those in our world who are always hungry and thirsty, and of all those who have so little when we have so much. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father God, we ask you to protect our loved ones, our friends, our fellow parishioners, and our neighbors. We pray that this Lenten season may bring grace to our friends and relatives who no longer practice their faith, and that they may return in the certain knowledge of your loving acceptance of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are ill and in pain, longing to live full lives, for those who are sad and hurt, longing for comfort, for those in hospital awaiting treatment, for those convalescing, seeing an end to their suffering, and for those whose only relief will come through the end of life. May we always offer gentle support to those in trouble, sensitive encouragement to those in need, and strength and support to those in weakness. We pray especially for King Charles and the Princess of Wales at this time. We pray for all those on our parish prayer list and for those known only to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those saddened by the death of someone close to them. Give them your comfort as they mourn for their loved ones and turn their darkness into light. We commend to your everlasting love and care those who have died. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help us to see this season of Lent as an opportunity to develop our discipleship and discipline, and as your Son Jesus showed us how to reject temptation. Fill us with grace to be faithful to his example in this Lenten season and the years ahead. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Let us pray. God, our refuge and our strength, receive all we offer you this day, and through the death and resurrection of your Son, transform us to his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, because you bid your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that reborn through the waters of baptism and renewed in the Eucharistic mystery, we may be more fervent in prayer and more generous in works of love. Therefore we raise our voices to you in praise to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and We break this bread. Communion in Christ's body must go in. Let your church be the wheat which bears fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
All your works praise you, O Lord. And your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who his spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God, Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.